Let's go over this yesterday. We set this trade up yesterday perfectly before it happened. We were talking about this trade here around 9 o'clock, uh, 8.45, 8.30 to 9 o'clock yesterday. I'll give you a heads up an hour before it broke out. So I said yesterday we had a breakout of 41.04 and a quarter. How did I get that exact number? There's my exact number I gave yesterday. I said if we break 41.04 and a quarter, our target is 41.48. All right. So there's a gap between there of what 44, 44 S and P points. The reason that I went over this level, if I see big gaps in between, these are called my supply demand lines. Or to get more technical for you guys that understand order flow, these are called basically order blocks. These lines that come up, they're specifically designed for your Rinko bars that we use in the trading room. All right, the new update that I got out to you guys specifically are designed for the Rinko bars. Okay, it does still work on minute charts. You're going to use on minute charts, etc. But they're specifically designed for any type of Rinko. What these lines represent are supply demand. If price is underneath the blue line, that's supply. If price is above it, the, the blue line, the cyan line, that's demand. Old supply becomes new demand. If you break through a supply line, you want to retest it because that becomes new demand. So in other words, let me break down. That's the general term that everybody uses, supply demand. But what a lot of traders don't understand and why a lot of supply and demand lines are incorrect on how they print is that, or how they show up, is they're not showing the actual order blocks. These actually show the order block where past price accumulation or distribution happened and you see a major move in the market. So in essence, what it is, is that you have an order block is a big move in the market where you have a large scale of buying and selling. So let's take an example. I drew this up yesterday. Large, this is an example of large scale buying or selling. And I, we, we talked about this before the breakout yesterday, about an hour before it broke out. And here was my target yesterday, right? We went over that. I said there's a big gap in the market. And when there's a big gap in the market, if you know anything about market profile, what that means is I have no uh, overlying resistance on high value point of control or low value areas and nothing in between there and had nothing in between my supply demand. So I had demand here, supply up here. So we had a big gap in the market that needed to be filled. So when these lines, let's, let's explain why these lines come up though. An order block is where you get someone that's conducting a large buy or sell, meaning it could be a bank, an institution, a hedge fund, a prop firm, or what have you. What happens is, is that they can't scale in all the contracts that they want. If, if, they're, if they're betting it's going to go up, the market's going to go up, where, whatever you trade, whatever futures, crypto, stocks, whatever you trade. If you see three big moves up on three big giant candles, and it could be a 30-minute chart, daily chart, weekly chart, depends on what they're trading, uh, their, their time frame that that institution or bank is trading, if they're position trading, day trading, it could be algorithms, it's day trading, what have you. But what happens is that you see a big move up, three consecutive big bars up, is setting higher highs. That's when these supply demands will print from the previous candle before you saw a big, what's called an imbalance in the market. That imbalance in the market creates the market to go up, meaning buyers overtook sellers. What that creates is called an order insufficiency. So when I was a I was a small order execution trader, uh, and also I was also, you got probably heard of Sos Bandits. I was a Sos Bandit uh, back in the 1990s. We were all over the news about how we were trading the market um, with institutions back and forth and all that stuff. Um, it's because we were buying on the bid and selling the offer to retail, etc. When there's big spreads in stocks back in the day, we did the same thing when I was a Sos trader is what we would do is we would look for market insufficiencies and we would try to see when the market was going to, exp when the market was exploding, taking off, and then we'd try to start bidding stocks out on the retest of that order block. So supply demand is the same thing. When you see a big move 
like this, three big up moves, you're going to see these lines print, fresh lines print, because they print because the, the, or, the, the origin of that move is where the insufficiency started when you can see price moving up, when you see these big banks or institutions scaling in on big buyer sellers, because their intention will become public and they don't want that. They don't want their intention to become public or this market will go from here to here in a matter of a heartbeat. So what they do is they try to hide order flow and I used to trade off of level two really heavy back then. We'd buy 10, 20, 30,000 shares of Microsoft in and out for, for, for the spread of the stock when before it went down to a teeny spread. We had spreads on stocks that were three quarter to half a point. We'd do that. We'd see the insufficiency in the market. We'd wait for the order block retest and we'd try to get in on the supply demand. The same thing happens today, but now it's even more pronounced because it's electronic trading. Now we have electronic trading in the market. Now these really can show their hand. So what the institutions, bank, hedges, what have you, they're leaving their footprint. Now life becomes easy because now you have the computer or the algorithm doing the workforce. So this supply, this demand line printed and this supply line printed. So we know an order block is where you see an insufficiency in price, you see price move higher, and it has to retest. So whatever the banks and hedges didn't get filled on this move up, they like to retest it to get filled more of their contracts on the retest. Okay? That's called a simple break retest. All right? That, that's what it's called. So when it broke out here then, when it broke out of the supply demand, I said we had resistance here on the order block here or the supply line, resistance here. I said if we break out, look for the retest, look for it to fill this gap. That's what it did yesterday. It broke out. You can see it broke, it retested. There's your retest of it stopped almost right to the tick. I mean, it was right on it on that 4104 and a quarter. And that 4104 a quarter is known, like I said, we knew that an hour before even the breakout. This gap was known a whole day before it even happened. So when you see a big gap in the market like this, a big giant gap, okay, that tells you that we have no overhead resistance. Look at the speed in the market. So you want to try to get long on the retest here. Or well, you want to try to get long. Here's my bull. Anything, here's my green line. Anything above 40 is bullish I have in the room on the green line, on the oscillator. Anything below 65, I have bearish in the room. Now on the strategy I went over last night in the conference call, which you can play that in the conference call. Uh, Gerald, is the conference call up on the on the website yet? I don't know. It, it's Um, so it's um, um, let me see if Gerald has a conference call up last night yet. Gerald, has a conference call up on the website yet? Just go to daytradingthefutures.com, uh, go to videos. You'll be able to play last night's conference call. But I, I can show you how we can use order automation to fire into these trades like this. This is where the automated arrow fired. But anything above 40, if you have that in your strategy, that would have fired the automation to fire in the trade. If you do fire yourself in trades like this, um, the best ones on momentum is when you are above this level, above the 38 level. And I went over this on the conference call if you're trading the NASDAQ futures. Um, if you're above the 38, you get this level, you get these nice hard pushes. So the, the fill plus or minus a couple ticks was 41.09 and three quarters to 40 what? Uh, 09 three quarters plus or minus ticks. And it got up to that 48 level. Eventually, uh, the order block hit the high um, yesterday, or oh, that's today, is uh, the high was an order block up there. That's a previous old supply resistance. These lines are notorious for calling swings in the market. You can see it had my first target, hit my second, went all the way down from 56 down to 48, found support at 48, went to 48 down up to 66 again. These are big swings in between these supply demand lines or these order block levels. So it's very important that you see that when you see these market uh, uh, inefficiencies that you get these big gap in the market because now what you're doing, you're using order block what the institutions like to move away from, I mean, get buying, large-scale large, large scale buying, large selling. So this tells me there's large-scale buying or selling. Now, when they're tight like this, you know, you don't get the big runners, right? So you're limited to your run. They're still nice because the spread's still nice on them, 46 
uh, 48 to 56. But when you see big gaps in the market, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking to see the areas of the path of least resistance and the path of, path of least support because that is holes in the market. And this is created by market profile and this is created by order block trading. So we, we need to understand that. All right, Gerald, are you in the background? Would, would, would you post to me? I gotta see if Gerald had posted that real quick. Um, so today, let's get it down. Let's think about what we have a look today going. Now what can happen? Now, since we have the path of least resistance to the upside, do you think there's gonna be a path of support on the downside? No. This gap can be filled again. It can be filled all the way down to 4104 again, all right? So if we start getting any type of momentum in the market where this oscillator is below 65, we could short it, target 4104, all right? The, the first break into a gap is the best, no doubt, because you've got a lot of buy stops above you or, or, or sell stops below you. So if I skinny this down, I can see right away going into next week where my breakout levels are. And I can see going into the whole week of, of until they're broke. I know now, since we played that big move yesterday, I know now any type of breakout going into next week and today, look at this gap in the market. I got no underlying support, no underlying resistance below these levels. So I want to keep those in the back of my head. I had 78 yesterday yesterday as a critical level and I had 4104 as a critical level. So what it was yesterday, here was my launching point, is I didn't care if it went down, I don't care if it goes up. I mean we can short, we can go long. We don't have to just go long. So that was the bubble in the market right there where the market was just oscillating back and forth and then I said if we break down through 78, we got some major downside. Obviously, you break through a four, so my target's 48. So I had we had big downside below 78. So 78 is a key level. I want to keep in the back of my head going into next week and even today if it ever breaks. But that, that's what you want to keep all next week. You want to skinny this down and see where the major gaps are. Because those are your playable gaps. Because then you're gonna get a lot of speed. And speed creates opportunity. And as as day traders, you want speed, you need speed. Without speed, without knowing this information where the institutional traders scaled in on large buy and sell orders, it would, it, you have an edge over your trading opponents now. Now we have an edge knowing if we break 4104, they're gonna try to mark the market up. If they break below 78, they're gonna try to mark the market down. That gives you an edge. And an edge is what you need to survive in this environment and to get the ticks that you wanna get. So now we know that we know the edges in the market. We know if we break through here, that's our overall target, okay?